Did you play an instrument in grade school, high school, or college? Perhaps you can still play that instrument and would like to join an organized group. Well, if so, we just might have the group for you. Stay tuned and learn all about the San Jose Metropolitan Band. My guests today are Mr. Greg Burgantz, director of the San Jose Metropolitan Band, and Ms. Rebecca Bishop, president-elect of the board. We are all, also lucky enough to have a live quintet composed of band members here in our studio to play for us today. Hello, welcome to the show. Could you tell them, uh, introduce yourself to our TV audience and tell me a little bit about your roles in the San Jose Metropolitan Band? First. My name is Greg Brigantz and I'm the music director of the band. Uh, I believe this is my 27th year with the band, so I've been with the band for quite a while. 27 years, really? That's impressive. And you are? I'm Rebecca Bishop. Um, <clears throat> I'm the president-elect of the band. Um, I will become president in August. I've been with the band 10 years this year. Not quite as long as Greg, but quite a while. And I'm a trumpet player in the band. I notice that you refer to this uh, organization as a band instead of an orchestra. And I guess, and I've been to some many of your concerts, in fact, and uh, it's a very large group. Uh, what is the difference between a band and an orchestra? An orchestra includes strings, violins, violas, cello, mm -hmm. bass. So that becomes the, the heart of the, or of the orchestra is the string section, and then the winds comp and percussion complement that. Uh, in, a, in a band, uh, pretty much the clarinets and flutes take the place of the melodic part that the strings usually contribute in an orchestra. So it's, it's uh, probably one of the reasons we play a lot of transcriptions. We play music that's written for orchestra, but then other arrangers or transcribers will take that music and they'll write it for a wind ensemble or a band. Are there other organizations similar to uh, this one in the Silicon Valley? Uh, bands or bands or and or orchestras? And S well, there's several orchestras, especially youth orchestras, but uh, community bands such as ourselves, there's a, quite a few in the Bay Area. Are there? Okay. Yeah, usually they're at different levels of competency. Like <laughs> that, they'll require different, mm -hmm. different entry, entry level. Um, some have auditions, some don't. Um, actually, in the 10 years I've been in the band, our level of musicianship has really gone up. It's gotten a lot more, we play a lot more difficult music than we did 10 years ago. And the band has also grown, and our musicians have tended to be better, although we don't do auditions. Now, Greg just briefly alluded to the type of music that you play. Well, a lot depends on our venue, what, what we're doing. We do two large concerts, usually per year. Um, and those we'll have a theme for. So, for instance, recently we did have a movie-themed concert, so we played mm -hmm. a lot of, of movie music, and that was very well received, very <laughs> popular. Something everybody recognizes. A, uh, definitely, that yes. really draws in people. Our, actually, this is our 50th anniversary year, and in November we are having our 50th anniversary concert, and it's going to be at the Mexican Heritage Center in San Jose. Oh, really? okay. And so, you know, because of that theme, we're going to do Latin theme music. Um, now, you mentioned uh, the various types of music you play. I know uh, when I was in uh, grade school uh, many moon ago and uh, high school and college, uh, for instance, uh, people used to say, well, music is expensive. And we'd uh, <laughs> go out at that time, at least we'd you know, photocopy music and song, which may have been illegal at the time. I don't know. It may still be illegal. But, uh, uh, how, how much does music cost now? I mean, when, you, when you buy, the, let's say, uh, multiple uh, purchases of these uh, diff different types of music? Sure. They, it ranges quite a bit, anywhere from 50 to $60 for an arrangement. Some of the uh, bigger arrangements, big, some of the... Uh, transcriptions from from movie soundtracks, for example, can be over a hundred dollars. Over a hundred. Now, we, is that for the entire band? Oh yeah, that that includes yeah. the, the conductor score and all the parts. So How do you order the arrangements? Um, it's changed. That's changed a lot over the years too. Um, I remember 
probably 15, 20 years ago, uh, one day a year, I would take a caravan of band members up to San Francisco, <laughs> and we'd go to Byron White Sheet Music. Oh, okay. And we would spend the day there. I'd send send them all in different directions because they had a huge library of music there for sale or catalog. And everybody would come back with a stack of music, and I'd sit there and I'd go through all the scores and I'd try to determine which was challenging but accessible. You know, some right. music that's that's good that I think the the membership would enjoy, that the audience would enjoy, and was challenging. Um, some of the complaints about the music in the past before I was there was some of the music was rather mundane and boring and mm -hmm. not very challenging. So uh, I think that's the way. One of the key key ways the band has improved over the years is I, I always try to choose music that is, it's possible, but it's also very challenging. Different right. bands in the area, we often, well, our, our library is online, so other bands can look at our library list and say, hey, can we borrow that piece? And we can do the same thing to mm -hmm. other bands. So there's actually a really nice synergy between the bands sharing Absolutely. music around here. You mentioned, for instance, I believe you gave a number of members in the band. Uh, what was that number again? I think I said about 70, about it, it, it fluctuates. Yeah, about 70. Do you like to kind of cap it at that number, or do you just take, uh, can it expand indefinitely, or uh, what? It's a good question, because sometimes we could always use some more good clarinet players. Okay. Um, uh, we have uh, eight or nine trumpets usually, so and that's most of the arrangements we do have three trumpet parts, so it's a good balance of three trumpets on each part. Some have cornet parts and trumpet parts and flugelhorn parts, and suddenly we have we don't have every part doubled, but we have some of them doubled. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it, it's it's a moving target. I know, said you have a harp player. The harp part is very important. So uh -huh. uh, Crystal Steinke plays harp with us. Uh, she has for a couple of years now. And you sometimes um, incorporate a piano too, I believe. Uh, right. Fortunately, we have uh, Erica Garmer uh, plays flute in the band, but she also mm -hmm. plays piano quite well. So mm -hmm. if there's an important piano part, she'll uh, she'll give up the flute for that piece and play the piano. Gave her some exercise. What about some of the less common instruments, like the bassoon and the oboe, for instance? Good, another good question. And we we're very fortunate to have two bassoon players and uh -huh. two oboes and an English horn. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's taken years to grow the band to, to get those less common mm -hmm. instruments, those seats filled. And uh, feel very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. We have a full tuba section. We have horns, anywhere from five to eight horns, some mm -hmm. concerts, which is great. And as I said, six or seven trombones. Uh, eight or nine trumpets. It's a pretty good sized band. Yeah, our, our brass section is definitely very uh, very robust. Yes, that's a good <laughs> word. You mentioned that you don't have an addition to join the band, and uh, is uh, do is that kind of rare or is that common through these community bands throughout the Bay Area? There are certainly some local bands in in the Bay Area that require auditions and only have openings. You know, they'll let right. you know when the openings are. <coughs> um, We've never had auditions. We've discussed it uh, as the board. It's been in the, in the, in the minutes for board meetings <laughs> and myself. And it seems the, the system we have seems to be working pretty well. So I don't think anybody wants to rock the boat because the word audition is going to scare some people away. Right, it will. Um, yeah. and we're not a competitive band, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, there are some. So we actually fill a niche that I think is needed. We're a good sized community mm -hmm. band. We have a pretty good skills. Um, there's lower level bands, there's more challenging bands. San Jose Wind Symphony, Ohlone Wind Symphony, very fine groups. Do you have the uh, chair system in the <coughs> first chair, second chair, third <coughs> chair? Or do you Every section does things differently. Yeah. Um, the, the sections have section leaders, mm -hmm. so there, there is someone who will decide who plays the right. which parts on each piece and right. everything. Um, some sections, like the trumpet, we switch everything around. I might play first <laughs> on this song, second on this song, third on right. this song, trumpet on this song, whatever. Other sections, it's more, you know, for this concert, this this group will all play first, <laughs> this group will all play second. They rotate. Okay. The section leader is pretty much, we, we rely on them to decide mm -hmm. what makes the most sense for their section. Now, it, after attending your concerts, I, I noticed that You've got a wide variety of people. Uh, you've got some uh, relative, <coughs> very young people to uh, much older people. Uh, can you tell us about some of the backgrounds of your, uh, the people who play in your band? Sure. Uh, we have <coughs> uh, retired Intel employees. We have a really? uh, 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 veterinary surgeon. Veterinary surgeon. Uh, we have Google employees. Um, we have, uh, let's see. 
of just about every walk of life. We have we, we've had retired dentists and and doctors uh, in the past, so it's, it's quite a quite a stretch and we have mm -hmm. a lot of yeah I mean we're in Silicon Valley you know yeah. so it's like it's it's we do have a lot of Rebecca's an attorney I, I'm an attorney uh, we have a lot of diversity as far as what people do you know it's it's not all you know Google and Intel people right. Right. you know there are there are lots of others we have some middle school students mm -hmm. uh, who some of Greg's middle school students mm -hmm. who are very very good and have have joined us um, but like most community bands or like many community bands probably the majority are going to be the the older people the retirees who basically have either played music all their lives and just desperately need music in their right. lives, or they've you know getting to the point where they're like, well, what am I going to do in retirement? You know what? I want to I want to play music again. I want to give myself something to do, and so they find us and either get back into music or they've always been in music or you know whatever. Um, it's it's pretty diverse. It reminds me of a, a Barry Sachs player that hadn't <laughs> hadn't played his instrument in probably 25, 30 years. He had a career at IBM uh, in the DB2 division for mm -hmm. many, many years. I think he was one of the original authors of Fortran or something. Oh, really? <laughs> but okay. yeah, he, he decided. I remember that from when I was in he college. De <laughs> he decided he wanted to start playing his instrument again. He came in very apologetically and kind of begged me to, to let him sit in uh -huh. and play with us. And I said, sure, Bob, have a seat. <laughs> and uh, he played with us for about 12 or 15 years before he finally retired from IBM and moved away. So I haven't mm -hmm. seen him in several years. But that was kind of a typical story from a, a lot of a lot of members, you know, 15, 20 yeah, we, years ago. We had a, a younger one. He was probably in his late 30s early 40s uh, he decided he wanted to learn to play trumpet and he took about six months and he taught himself how to play trumpet and he joined us he self-taught and he huh. played for about three years before he moved back to Korea mm -hmm. but uh -huh. he he you know initially he was kind of quiet and he would kind of hide behind other people but by the time three years later he was playing out sure. with the rest of us and <laughs> we really miss him so <laughs> you know it's it's we're, we're really we want people to come and enjoy playing right right and your rehearsal well, when do you rehearse we rehearse Monday nights okay. um, at OB Studios on Piercy Road in San Jose Okay. at uh, 7.30, 7.30 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people can just show up and play. It helps if they, you know, maybe email, yeah, somebody brings email in us yeah. first uh, just to let us know. Um, they can always contact us through our website, mm -hmm. uh, sjmetroband.org. Mm -hmm. Now, we're lucky enough to have a quintet from your band here in the studio with us today. And uh, they're going to play some live music for us. Can you talk a little bit about the quintet who's in this and the type of music they're going to play? Um, I played the second trumpet part. Mark Bishop is playing first trumpet. Kathleen Richter is playing French horn. Greg McClure is playing tuba. And John Olson is playing the baritone, which we heard someone ca call a little tuba, but it's actually <laughs> a baritone horn or euphonium, uh, which is an entirely separate instrument. Tell us a little bit about the music they're going to play. Yeah, they're actually playing two pieces by Georges Bizet. Uh, I think they're beginning with uh, the Ferendal, which is a movement from L'Arlesian Suite Number no. 2. Again, these are both transcriptions. They're written for full symphony orchestra, and they've been transcribed. These are Canadian brass arrangements have been transcribed for brass quintet. I see. A lot of brass quintet. I would say most of brass quintet music are transcriptions of other quartets or quintets <laughs> or symphony. <laughs> so there is a, some original repertoire for brass quintet, but mm -hmm. not enough uh, being played lots of quintets. So two pieces, uh, Ferendal, and the other piece is, is uh, Toreador. Toreador, from, which from, yes. from everyone Carmen. will recognize. Everybody, Everybody will recognize that, yes. The great opera, Carmen. Well, yeah. good choices, so certainly. Let's go ahead and hear the brass quintet right now. Thank you. 
You've had some famous musicians uh, accompany the San Jose Metropolitan Band from time to time. Can you tell me about uh, some of these uh, uh, musicians and uh, how, the, how you found them and how you selected them and uh, got them to uh, accompany you? Well, that's a good question. I've started, I think, five or six years ago. Uh, there was a very phenomenal tubist out of Norway. His name is Oystein Badsvik. He's not a big name, but mm -hmm. he's probably one of the greatest tuba mm -hmm. soloists in the world. Mm -hmm. Fantastic musician. And uh, I got a hold of him. I sent him an email. And I knew he was going to be touring the United States uh, in about eight months or so. This was uh, early in the winter, and I think he was going to be in the States in mm -hmm. October. So I got a hold of him, asked him if he had room on his tour, and he said yes. And so we tried to book book him and we did that. He brought four or five pieces uh, that he actually provided the music for and we rehearsed it and that was our first guest artist was okay. Oystein. Uh, terrific guy. Awesome. Awesome musician and a really nice man. Uh, next uh, we had a piece in our in our library, um, a kind of a jazzy piece by Alan Vizzuti. Um and we we're trying to find a, I was trying to find a trumpet soloist that could play it because <laughs> it featured the trumpet. And I called some of the local pros, and they wouldn't touch it. And finally, uh, Tammy Boyce, our, our concertmaster, recommended, well, have you tried to con contact Alan? And so I did. I called Alan Vizzuti, and we booked Alan, and he did a whole program with us. And it was, uh, that was really exciting, because mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of a big-name trumpet player mm -hmm. and does a lot of touring, and he still does. And he studied with Doc Severinsen when he was a kid. Really? And he, kind of in the style of Doc. So terrific trumpet player, a lot of, lot of talent. Um, we had the Canadian Brass just about a year and a half ago. Yes, I remember and, uh, that. Yeah, I was <laughs> concert, yeah yes. that, was, uh, that was a thrill for me. I, I started talking to them about how much it would cost to have them out, and we'd try to figure out. We try to break even. We don't, we're not a profit center. Right. We're a non-for-profit. Non so right. uh, figuring out how much it would cost to get the Canadian Brass out here. And we saved a lot of money because they were going to be on the West Coast anyway uh, during that time period. And so they, uh, I was talking to their agent, and they said, well, can we book them on January 31st? And I said, well, that's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> for my 60th, time, birthday, my 60th birthday, I got to conduct the Canadian <laughs> Brass. We did the Bernstein Mass, mm -hmm. and my own quintet, Oxford Street Brass, got to play a couple of pieces with them, uh, double, mm -hmm. double brass quintet thing. So it was a big thrill for me. So mm -hmm. That was probably like the highlight of most of the, our br uh, brass players. The band players. membership <laughs> swelled to about 80. <laughs> <for that laughs> we, we, suddenly a lot of people yeah. showed up. 
everybody <laughs> wanted, wanted to play to with us. Wanted to be in the band. So, and that every time we do this, uh, when you bring in such a great musicianship as a guest artist, the the whole musicianship of the band in, improves. And I've, yes. I've seen dramatic improvement just since we started having guest artists. So that's a tradition. We'll, every year or two, we'll, we'll we'll be booking guest artists as long as we can afford it and we can break <laughs> even. Yeah. Uh, it works out really well for both both ways. Now, uh, w when and where do you have concerts? How, how do you schedule your concerts? Do you have a general concert schedule throughout the year, or do you? Well, uh, so <laughs> we have to book the, the large halls uh, well in advance, like a year or more in advance. Um, basically, our favorite one, as it were, right now is uh, McAfee Center in right. uh, Saratoga, part of Saratoga High School. Um, and we've also often play in Mission City, uh, which is in uh, Wilcox High School. Wilcox High School. Wilcox right. mm -hmm. High School in Santa Clara. Uh, and like I said, for November 8th, for our big 50th, we're going to be playing at the uh, Mexican Heritage Center okay. in San Jose. Um, but it, it, it's a struggle trying to find a big enough venue for us. Right. I mean, not only the stage, because ideally we need like 30 by 50, which is 1,500 square feet, or actually ideally it's 40 by 50, mm -hmm. so it's 2,000. We can squeeze into 30 by 50. Mm -hmm. So finding a large enough stage for us, but also a large enough audience area um, that's affordable. Because, right. for instance, the city-run venues, they're just way out of our price range. Right. Uh, in, and so it's it's right now it's kind of McAfee and Mission City and mm -hmm. that's you know we're we're always mm -hmm. looking for new venues. Mm -hmm. So you know if any of your viewers have any ideas um, of, of other venues, yeah. where we'd be very happy to uh, hear about them. Now you mentioned that the band has a website and the website is what? www.sjmetroband.org. Okay. And then as a final uh, question. In e I'd like to hear from each of you, what do you think is the most rewarding aspect of being a member or, 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 of the San Jose Metropolitan Band? What, what do you really you start. value the most? Well, for me, it's honestly, it's being able to play. Um, I played, I start, you know, like many people, I started in elementary school, I played through junior high, I played through high school, played through college. Probably the worst three years of my life were law school. <laughs> and not just because it was law school, but because I actually wasn't playing music. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was not in a, in a group for those right. three years. And it just made me very unhappy. And then I recognized that, fortunately, and I got, I got back mm -hmm. into playing. And I taught kids at the uh, Boys and Girls Club, and I came back to So you just love to play music. It, I have to play music. <laughs> um, so the fact that I have a venue, and, and not just not just a venue where I can just show up and play, but we right. have performances and people want to be better, and everyone enjoys playing together. That's just huge for me. Okay. For me, it's, as I said earlier, watching the band grow, not just in numbers, but in musicianship, mm -hmm. uh, to see their enthusiasm, to see the... Uh, I can feel the enthusiasm when we get close to a concert, once people are really starting to learn their parts, when mm -hmm. it gets down to the last couple of weeks. We usually rehearse for eight to ten weeks, sometimes twelve, mm -hmm. before a concert, you know, once a week. And the first couple of rehearsals, there's a lot of absences and people are just learning their parts and I'm being patient. And as we mm -hmm. get closer to the you, concerts, you get very patient I, <laughs> I start to get a little more impatient and a little, a little more, more demanding <laughs> and kind of tighten the screws a little bit. And when they rise to the occasion, uh, and they, off, they almost always do, right. um, it's real exciting for me. The, the concert is a piece mm -hmm. of cake. I go out there and everybody's, everybody knows their part and it almost runs itself. Mm -hmm. So I don't get so nervous at concerts. It's leading up to the concerts. <laughs> well, all great. So thank you very much for coming for this interview today. I really enjoyed learning about it. And I'm sure our viewers will really enjoy learning about the Metropolitan Band. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this has been a wonderful show. And I thoroughly enjoyed the interviews and music. Thank you so much for telling our audience about the San Jose Metropolitan Band. We would now like to take a minute to close our program with a performance of the San Jose Metropolitan Band in concert with the Canadian Brass. <laughs>